Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Um, I'm doing a weekly update. Um, updates may not be weekly. After this, it may be a long, long time. We're getting ready to get into kind of I'm I'm still in in first trimester of my pregnancy, and we're getting ready to come up to the end of that uh, first trimester. And I'm experiencing some pregnancy fatigue, so I'm usually very, very tired and stuff and sort of sleepy and just sort of wiped out. So I'm just, you know, I'm really thankful that I'm during this time of being pregnant, I can be at home to take care of myself and to take care of this baby, especially because I'm a type 1 diabetic and stuff. And then I can get the rest and do everything I need to do and concentrate on doing what I need to do as a diabetic to make sure that me and this child are fine. So far, everything's going well. I've added on, I told you a while back we were adding on another insulin. So I've added on a third insulin to try to get my blood sugars in tighter control. Um, they're good, but it, it's all, it could always be better with being a diabetic. Plus, the thing about being a diabetic is they will never ever be in control like they are for people that are healthy and stuff. That's why I have diabetes and everything so um for the most part i'll just do what it is that i need to do you know to make sure they're as close on average to being really really good so that's going that's going well so now i want to tell you about a little bit about me and eating and i know people are thinking every you know for healthy women and and pregnancy eating is something that they can choose to kind of do what they want to do regarding eating you know and stuff you can be really stringent if you don't want to be really stringent you don't have to be really stringent and stuff um you know uh, you can diet you can do a lot of different stuff but there are a couple of things that keep me from eating exactly the way that i like and one of the things that has come up again for me that i've had but it's coming up and getting sort of progressively worse and probably will get progressively worse as this pregnancy goes on is I have a condition called gastroparesis. Now, if you think it sounds like what you think it sounds like, like paralyzed or your stomach, yeah, yeah, that's what it means. It means paralyzed stomach and stuff. And um, many diabetics get it after having diabetes for a long time. And as you know, I've had diabetes almost coming up 34 years here. So in that time, you you may end up with, if you're a diabetic, you may end up with gastroparesis. And what that means is that when I eat stuff, it usually, as usually for you, it sits on your stomach maybe, maybe two hours, maybe four hours for most stuff. Some stuff a little longer, but you know, two to four hours, it'll sit on your stomach and start to clear your stomach and go into your small intestines and then end up in your colon. Well, for me, it stays a long, long, long time and stuff. And pretty much everything stays a long, long time except liquid. And stuff, but most everything else stays a long, long time. So if I eat crackers or if I eat a sandwich or something like that, if I have a tuna sandwich, which I'm probably going to have today, it will sit there for hours in my stomach and I can feel it. It's not digesting, it's not really doing anything. And because women who are pregnant are have a um, produce a lot more progesterone, and that's just because we're our uterus is need to relax and, and get ready to hold a big baby. So we need that progesterone and it helps that smooth muscle relax. But it also does other things with other smooth muscle in your body. Your your uterus is not the only smooth muscle you have. So for people who um you know for kind of the sphincter when you're with the esophagus into your stomach, it'll sort of relax that too and people end up getting heartburn. Also, it'll relax your colon. So many pregnant women have constipation and stuff. It'll also, for women with sometimes with eye problems and stuff, it'll relax the muscles in your eyes. And so your eyes may get a little wonky at the end of a pregnancy. Well, if you have gastroparesis, it also relaxes those stomach muscles even more than they're already not really doing anything and stuff. Now, I don't have g severe gastroparesis, um, you know, but it's pretty bad. But I know people who have it really severe can't eat anything pretty much but liquids and stuff. So at this point, I'm 
okay with eating things, but there are certain things I can't eat. I can't eat sinewy meat, um, so steak and stuff like that I have to be really careful about. And I can't eat um, greasy food. I have to be careful about eating food with a lot of grease in it and stuff. I also have to be careful about eating um, raw vegetables and stuff. And so, you know, one of my pet peeves is people always talking about the raw vegetable. You know, there are lots of people who can't, if they have gastroparesis, they can't eat raw vegetables. So to make the suggestion to them that they eat raw vegetables is very, it sucks for them, you know, and stuff. Or somehow that raw vegetable diet is just this great diet. Well, for a lot of people, it's not. And that's always my suggestion is that if you're not a nutritionist, I suggest you stop making suggestions on what people should eat and what they shouldn't eat because a lot of people's system can handle a lot of things that people suggest they diet on or do and stuff. My body can't. I can't eat any raw vegetables. It's very hard for me to eat raw vegetables. Um, all my vegetables have to be cooked so they're soft so I can, you know, eat them and chew them down. I have to chew everything pretty fully. So, you know, um, I've always had a problem with dairy products anyway. Um, I'm lactose intolerant. So there's never anything I've been able to digest anyway and stuff. So at this point with the gastroparesis, which is not really terrible right now, there's just a couple of things I've taken out of my diet. But by the end of this pregnancy, what will probably happen is that I will have to eat six very small meals during the day, you know, and stuff so I can get all the nutrition that I need. And right now for breakfast, um, if I can't eat, if I feel like my stomach is still full and sometimes when I wake up in the morning it still feels like whatever I ate 10 12 hours ago is still sitting there I drink glucerna to be able to get the nutrition that I need and stuff you know so it's it's not the best thing in the whole wide world but it is what it is and stuff you know there's nothing I could do this is nine months of this after the baby is born things will kind of go probably back to the same as they were previously and you know I'll, my gastroparesis well it'll you know I'll still have it it'll it'll probably but it won't be as bad as it's been you know during the time of my pregnancy okay so I am you know doing all of this and doing all of the eating stuff there's other stuff that I do I have a very stringent eating diet I eat at the same time during the day in same intervals okay so I eat every four hours and then every two hours I have a snack the snack has to be carbohydrates and protein for the one after breakfast and for the one after lunch the bedtime snack has to be fat and protein which means you know for a lot of people oh, they, you know well for some people fat and protein is a really good thing um, so I eat like maybe a piece of bacon and a piece of cheese. You don't go crazy on the fat and protein. That's not good for you. But I have to have a fat and a piece of protein. So I eat a piece of ham or I eat a piece of, you know, chicken, you know, and stuff and a piece of cheese and stuff. Cheese is great. Fat is great. Fat and protein all in one. So is peanut butter. Um, you know, so I'll eat those things. But usually for snacks, I just eat like cheese and crackers or peanut butter and crackers. Believe me, I'm not a fan of peanut butter and crackers, but I'll eat it. Okay, for breakfast, I, like I say, right now I'm using Lucerna, but sometimes I eat yogurt. Yogurt gives me some calcium and stuff um, that I need in the morning. For, for lunch, I eat a sandwich, some kind of sandwich, and usually chips and stuff, and then I drink something. Now, I can't, of course, for most pregnant women, you can't drink Coca-Cola and stuff like that with caffeine. Um, I usually drink like diet ginger ale or something like that or just my little bubbly water. Now to tell you the truth, I probably shouldn't be drinking so much stuff with with uh, with carbonation because it gives me a little, it, give, it makes me like, oh, gas, and I mean it's like the gas that won't come out and stuff. So it's just like, ah, I'm in pain, but I love carbonated stuff. So I'm not going to give it up until it gets really, really bad. Okay, and so, so, and then for dinner, I have some combination of a uh, carbohydrate, a protein, and a vegetable um, every night. And that's pretty much how I eat. And it's every four hours. And I, in between those, I take a blood sugar before dinner, um, I mean before breakfast, after breakfast, before lunch, 
after lunch, before dinner, after dinner, and one at dinner t and one at bedtime, and then maybe one in the middle of the night. So I take between seven and eight blood sugars a day to try to keep up with all this stuff. The diet part is is not that bad, you know, and stuff. Um, I'm having fun trying to figure out, you know, I can I just try to figure out stuff that I could probably eat and not die from eating every day for for nine months. So it hasn't been it hasn't been that terrible. Um the um the you know, I've had a uh, some morning sickness and stuff and, and it hasn't been really that that hasn't been that bad either. I'm really thankful. And stuff and as I've told everybody, my blood pressure, which I'm I suffer from high blood pressure, my blood pressure is absolutely fantastic right now so I'm so thankful to God that that's just one less thing I have to worry about and I just can concentrate on the diabetes part and stuff so I want to say this this is not bad this is just stuff I have to do I know people think oh you know but really you think you wouldn't do stuff but really when it comes to your health and really in this case the health of your child you you do what you have to do you know and stuff it's not anything I question it's not anything I'm moaning and groaning and sad about I'm more than happy to do this um, you know this was my choice this is the choice that I made to have the baby and stuff and I'm just glad that you know I this is all I really need to do it's not really that terrible and to tell you the truth it's kind of nice because now I'm getting myself on a really kind of stringent eating regimen which helps my blood sugars, which also trains me not to eat in between and do a bunch of crazy snacking. So I end up gaining a bunch of weight because I can't gain a lot of weight during this pregnancy. As I said, I can't. I just can't. I cannot gain a lot of weight. If I gain a lot of weight, the baby gains a lot of weight. And then we also talked about, you know, glucose in this baby. I can't have high glucose because this baby feeds it, all its energy is from my glucose and stuff. And that's usually what makes really big, big babies. When people have really big babies and stuff, you know, it's because usually because people are, have not been controlling their glucose levels. And all the baby does is just take all your extra glucose because that's the only thing it can use for energy. So, and it gets really big and stuff. So I can't have those also. So far, everything's been good. It's just been sort of a regular pregnancy. Um, this is not a bad thing. Probably all pregnant women should be on some sort of more stringent diet and stuff like that. Um, I haven't had any really bad cravings. I've had a craving for vinegar, um, but it hasn't been anything like, oh, what have I got to have? You know, and stuff. I, I can live with it or without it and stuff like that. Um, I've had this weird craving for chicken. I don't know why. And eggs. And I don't like eggs. Um, I, I don't like the smell of eggs and stuff, but for eggs, which is also actually really good because I get protein. I get protein via eggs. So the other night, my husband made bacon and eggs for for dinner and stuff. So I was just like, oh, bacon and eggs are sounds really good. But I don't really regularly eat eggs and stuff, you know, but it's nice because I get protein. And so, you know, it's just sort of figuring out. And that's also put me in the habit, too, of reading labels. Because I have to read labels really carefully because I don't want to end up with stuff with a lot of sugar in it. So we were looking for some peanut butter. And yeah, we had to go. My husband was at the store, and he was calling me. And I was like, well, how much sugar does it have in it and stuff? And so we're going on how many grams of sugar it has along with protein and stuff, you know. And it was, you know, it makes the habit is I have to now read labels because I can't eat a bunch of stuff with sugar. They'll just raise my blood sugar. So I have to be really careful about what I eat. And that means I have to be more diligent about reading labels, which I probably should have done previously. But you know what? Hey, a, a new habit or making a new habit even after a long time is better than making no habit at all. So these so, so a lot of this stuff that I do now regarding food, I'll just take into even after the baby is here, you know, because I still have to be a healthy mommy. I still have to be, you know, my blood my blood sugar and my diabetes still has to be under good control because I have to take care of this child. And so I need to be aware. It can't be a bunch of low blood sugars. It can't be a bunch of high blood sugars and stuff like that. But I have a little more room now than I do now with the strict sort of blood sugars where they're like teetering towards low blood sugar all the time. And really, when you're just doing regular, when you're a regular type 1 diabetic just living, they don't want you there. They'd rather have you like between 120 and 150 and something. But as a pregnant diabetic, they want you really close. So they want you at like, you know, 80 
and and you know like and, and riches, which means many times I am very low. My blood sugar is very very low and stuff. And so what we're trying to do now is to make sure I don't end up with so many low blood sugars and stuff like that. But I keep a, a good supply of glucose shots of various kinds in my house. I mean I'm loaded down with glucose stuff. And, um, you know, and to make sure that if I'm having a low blood sugar, hey, just take a really glucose shot, get it up in, in a few minutes, in a minute or two, and then I, I'm good to go and can eat, maybe eat a snack or something like that. So, so it's just stuff I have to watch and be careful about. And the lucky part, the best part is I have a, I have a really loving, wonderful husband that is like, okay, I'd rather you be at home now than out trying to work and juggle this and working at the same time because I don't really know how type 1 diabetic mommies do it you know and stuff I I bow down to you I take my hat off to you if you do this and you work you know and stuff it's 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 a hell of a thing to do because there's a lot to do and a lot to monitor and stuff like that so um so that's my update um about me eating and you know I kind of so when I tell people kind of weird stuff about me eating and everything don't look so weird you know if I tell you that you know for 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 a snack I had a tiny scoop of ice cream well that's at break at dinner I mean at bedtime that's really good that's lots of fat and protein and something good you know to eat in the middle of the night my snack is four peanut butter M&Ms that's what I eat at 3 a.m. I wake up and I eat four peanut butter M&Ms. So, you know, yeah, it's odd, but it's because those foods have the combination of, you know, of, of protein, fat, whatever nutrients it is that I need and stuff. So they're not all bad. For a lot of people, those things help, you know, and stuff. And I know people are like anti this and anti that or anti whatever. But you know what? When you're anti something, you don't know who else it might be helping and who else's health it might be aiding. I like my peanut butter eminence. No, I don't eat a whole bag, but those four help to make sure that into the night I don't just drop off the earth with this really low blood sugar and go into a coma and stuff. You know, so, you know, and, and my big kind of overall thing for this is for anybody, um, if you're not a dietitian or a nutritionist, I would advise you not to give too much nutritional information. Nutrition is very complicated because people's bodies and how their bodies work, you know, for some people, for a small section of people can be very complicated. And so, like I say, when people say this stuff about the raw vegetable, blah, oh, it's just, yeah, well, there's lots of us out here who can't eat raw vegetables. And there's some of us out here that can't eat raw, raw vegetables, but they don't really even know it and stuff. So, you know, you have to be careful about what you about what you say, um, you know, because as a diabetic, stuff that may be bad for you or may not be good for you as a person who's healthy may actually help and aid me as a diabetic because my body works differently than yours. So, you know, just think about that for a moment and stuff. So hopefully I'll be back pretty soon to talk to you guys about the pregnancy. I don't know when I'm going to come back um, um, to talk to you again. But so far, everything is going good. And probably next time I come back will probably be to tell you what it is that we're having and stuff, you know. So um, until then, uh, I just wish everybody happiness and joy and everybody have a peaceful life and, you know, do what it is that you love. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Okay. Bye-bye.